It's officially October, which means that RGB gets turned orange, and I make way too many videos about motherboards. And as is tradition, we have to start off with the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite, which this time around is gonna cost you $290, a tad more than its predecessor. Starting off with CPU power, here we have 16 plus 2 plus 2 power phases, rated at 60 amps, more than enough for you, unless you're an avid overclocker, especially when combined with two for 8 pins for CPU power. And memory-wise, it's actually rated all the way up to 8,000 mega transfers per second, which I find kind of funny how everyone just overnight switched to using mega transfers per second rather than megahertz. I guess Dr. Ian Kutris got what he wanted in the end. PCE expansion wise, unfortunately it looks like Gigabyte haven't listened to my endless ramblings last generation because we still don't have a single PC 1X slot. Instead, we do have a primary PC Gen 5 16X slot, another 16X actually Gen 4x4 slot, and to finish it off, an older Gen 3 slot that is actually just two lanes. And before you make a fool of yourself and write down a comment that I'm gonna delete anyway, yes, I know 1X cards work in 16X slots, but they just look better in 1X slots. Like, that is the PC equivalent of just someone wearing oversized clothes, but whatever. Storage wise, you also get pretty much what you'd expect for a motherboard at this price point with one PCE Gen 5 slot and three additional 4.01s giving you more than enough storage options. And while I still detest the fact that four steady connectors has become the standard rather than six, I do understand that not many people are going to be using that many SATA devices anyway because I'm just an old dinosaur at this point. I mean, I was born in 01, so in Gen Z terms, I am pretty much a dinosaur. Then there's the rear I.O. and the thing that Gigabyte always does best, stuffing it with as many USB Type A ports as possible, and I mean, it's hard to beat the record last time for whopping 12. And well, they didn't even attempt to beat the record here, but that is still very understandable. That is more than enough USB Type A for most people. You do, however, get a pretty big upgrade when it comes to USB, and there's the two USB Gen 4 Type C ports. You heard that right, in the span of a generation, we went from one USB Type C port at 20 gigabit to two. 40 gigabit per second ones. The other rear I.O. is also fine with a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. The newly introduced Wi-Fi 7, which is nice, especially since instead of the regular old antennas where you have to screw in the two coax individually, now you get something Gigabyte is calling Easy Plug to make the process of attaching the antenna much easier. You also get an HDMI port for integrated graphics with no display port, and also the one thing that Gigabyte always gets wrong, the audio options, seeing how you just get two audio jacks and optical speed if. However, a Apart from that, you can't really complain too much with this motherboard. It also looks great as well, with small but really nice changes compared to the last gen model. Now granted, apart from the improved rear I.O. and the improved aesthetic, you aren't really getting that much that's really new. However, I still can't be that mad at it. Sure, it costs $290, but it looks great and it has pretty much all the features you could ever ask for, so if you want to buy it yourself, then Amazon and Newick links will be down in the video description below. And maybe check out our Patreon as well, so we can cover as many motherboards this generation as possible, but it's huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Elvroniak, Bottle Smoker, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Mick Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Level Up, and Robert Sanders. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.